Okay. Wow. What did I just read? Okay. So, KJ4YZI here. So I just, just posted a video on a dual band handheld that I thought would be good for satellite. I just picked up a couple months ago an ICOM 9700 and I made satellite contacts with that but working two meter sideband with it and then right after this video here about five minutes ago a commenter says hey Eric you might want to read this this is terrible and then I clicked on it never have I ever clicked on a comment and started the camera immediately so the title says it all well, let me explain what this is happening they're actually at meetings with no opposition to take our two meter band 144 to 146 now let's 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 get something clear here. <clears throat> I don't follow politics. I don't know a lot. You guys are way smarter than I am when it comes to, you know, reading these articles and, oh, yeah, this is what's happening here, that. I don't follow along on the doomsday stuff. I don't watch the gold price every day. I do invest in silver. But I don't, you know, wait for the earth to come crumbling down and watch these conspiracy theories and could this happen and blow smoke up your <laughs> don't do that. But what I just read was that they're actually considering it's at a meeting to reallocate 144 to 146 megahertz for aeronautical use. Now, <clears throat> that would turn ham radio upside down if you told me that every handheld that had two meter on it and every tech that's on getting his ham radio license is unable to use most of two meters. And then you're gonna tell me that my ICOM 9700 on two meter sideband and two meter EME moon bounce, and radios like my FG2D on APRS are useless. I'm not allowed to use APR, what the hell? I'm not allowed to use APRS anymore if they take our band? Satellites are null and void? Two meter AM, null and void? Really? That's, that's really happening. That's really happening. They're actually considering taking that, and what's really happening though is this. They're like this, they're like, okay, uh, why don't we show those ham guys who's boss? Yeah, let's let's beat them up. Let's let's show them what we can do. No, that's not what's happening. What's happening is they're like, hey, nobody's using this. Look at this little section right here. There's not a lot of people on there. Why not cut that up and use it for aeronautical? Imagine, hey Stu, imagine what we could do with those two new that, that two megahertz of frequency. Oh, Rick, that'd be a good idea. Why don't we bring it to a meeting? Put it on the board. That's what's happening. Okay. I kind of say that I saw this coming or we've been talking about this a while, but I'm, this pisses me off. I'm really mad about this because they, this happened to 220, you know, back in the day before my time. 220 was a great band and they said, well, there's, you know, you got this guy over here. He's a diehard on 220 and he's sitting there with his radio every day, but there's nobody on there. So why don't we cut that band up and sell this off? Oh, the hams, right, right, the hams. Give them that little bit right there. Nobody's going to use that. Just give them a little bit and we'll sell this off and ba boom, cha ching, they make money and they do this and they. That's what happened. And the same thing is already now going to happen with these higher frequencies like UHF, VHF. The title is No Strong Opposition. So, what's that mean? There's a bunch of people sitting around a table and they're all like, Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. And you have this one guy over here, he's like, No, no, what are you doing? Imagine sitting at the table when you're that one guy and you're like, no. And everybody's like, okay. No, that's, that's what's happening. And the more this gets underutilized, the more this is going to happen. Okay. So let's, let's talk about what would happen. First of all, the reason I'm making this video right off, I mean, I don't script anything, but I just watched that. I was in the middle of something else and this guy's like, hey, check this out. And I'm like, wow, camera time. So what would happen? So. MFJ, Gigaparts, uh, Diamond Antenna, Comet, uh, everybody. I mean, the ICOM and the ASU won't make handhelds that do that anymore. Why are they going to put the technology in if nobody's going to be able to use two meters, right? It'll be all UHF handhelds. What happened to that two meter repeater you bought and you put up? It's gone. My 13 element two meter. I'll tell you what I'll be doing on my 13 element two meter Chris Craft. I'll be beaconing every day on APRS at 160 watts facing north until someone comes knocking at my door wanting to take my stuff. I'll, I'll get mad and be a pirate about it, you know? I'm not gonna just like, yeah, here you go. Here, take, take my stuff too. No, I'm not gonna do that. But all of a sudden, M squared's gotta stop making two meter EME antennas and satellite antennas and Diamond's gonna stop making handheld antennas for VHF. Like, really? 
But that's what's happening. That is what's happening. Uh, and then I thought maybe maybe this is just you know one of those guys that follows me that's you know really all about this. And I started clicking around, and I'm like, no, there's people talking about this for weeks, and I just found out about it. I mean, we've been talking about use it or lose it for months or years, but this is actually right here now. It's on our doorstep. And if you weigh it out, will they actually benefit from taking that? Yeah, because they'll use the band and nobody else will. I'm not saying you don't use the band, but in general as ham radio, it's everybody's going to a UHF hotspot for D-Star. You know, that guy that really irked me on D-Star that day says, why even learn how to build an antenna? I'll work the world fill my logbook on D-Star and I'll hang it up for the year or for my life, you know, that really, so that's your, your ticket, a UHF hotspot or a DVAP and no need to explore any other bands because you can fill your logbook and go pet the dog when you're done and never get on ham radio again. Like what fun is that? And that's kind of what some people do. Oh, two meters. That's, that's the, the kitty band. Really? I got news for you. I've done more on two meters than you have. If you say that, if you say that, I have way more experience on two meters than you ever will have if you tell me that's a kitty band or that's the little techie band or that's the beginner band. No. You're the guy that sits there on the 40 meter rag chew and just listens all day every morning on the net and doesn't say anything except when you disagree and you throw your call out and that's you, you know, that's me getting angry. I mean, how do you, how do you tell me that's the kitty band? Oh, two, I, there's one guy around here. I'm like, oh, so I haven't talked to you, but you've lived here for 15 years. Yeah. I don't get on two meters. That's for the, the young guys. That's for the, the, you're the person that's making the reason that they want to take that. Two meters is just as important as any other band that we are licensed to use, period, the end, shut your mouth, you're wrong, you can disagree all you want, click thumbs down, you're wrong. Two meters is not the kitty band, it is not the tech band, it's not the, well we use that until we learn how to build an antenna that we never go there again. You're the reason why they think that and start taking our bands. UHF and VHF, even before my time, you were on AM, people were on different, you know, it was a big deal. There's people trying to use VHF to work transatlantic to the European. But the guy that tells me two meters is a kitty band, for some reason, can't get on HF and make a contact two states away. But there's people that live their life on EME moon bounce, and that's all they do. They devote every minute of their time bouncing signals off the moon. That's impressive. 500, almost 500,000 mile contact there and back. And you're going to tell me two meters is a kitty band or two meters isn't important or it's underutilized and we're going to take two meters because we need to use that for aeronautical. Wow. So I get a little angry and, and I probably half of this probably makes no sense. I may be wrong, but let's raise awareness now. Let's start this. If I need to make a video to submit to somebody with legitimate information on why they're stepping on the wrong toes, give me feedback in the comments. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me, you know what, Eric, make a new video because you're totally wrong. Okay. Or you know what, you got a good point. Let's start sharing this. Yeah, let's do that. But you guys are smart out there and I learn a lot from my commenters. So leave a comment on what you think is happening or what is happening. Clear up me or tell me I'm totally right and let's do something about this or let's let them take it because Lord knows I have no pull in this hobby. What am I going to do to save that? They're going to walk all over me all day. But if I need to raise awareness, I will. I'm here to protect our two meter band, our handhelds, our two meter EME moon bounce, and our satellites that use two meter upload. I mean, what am I going to do with this autonomous satellite tracker? If I'm about to build this, I just bought the parts for it. I just made a video on it. They're not going to go up and start changing satellites. They're not going to just start reassigning frequencies on the satellites. I think those satellites will be gone. And they're not going to just start flying new satellites up at how many millions of dollars a pop to satisfy me or you. So this is a big deal, guys, and this is a big problem. Let me know, 73KJ4YZI. Oh, and to the people in the meetings that are over there trying to do this, thanks.